So welcome everybody. This is the uh, Maynard Zoning Board of Appeals. And it is 7.02 p.m. on, and what is today, the 23rd of January? Yes. And we're meeting via Zoom. And we have on our agenda, approval of minutes. And so did everybody get a chance to review the minutes? Yes. Yes. Any comments, corrections, or edits? Then we need we need somebody to make a motion to accept them or approve them. Mm -hmm. Leslie is doing that. Good. So Leslie approves them or makes the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. John seconds. <clears throat> so all in favor. Looks like everybody is in favor. So that means the minutes are approved as written. Very good job, guys. We have a public hearing, which is a continuation from the zoning board meeting of December 19th, 2022. It's a special permit application filed by Justin King of 18 Garfield Ave, Maynard. He resides at the subject property, a single family dwelling in an S1 residential district and per, Main, per Maynard Town Bylaws, section 325, the petitioner is requesting a special permit for a trade shop use to operate a small engine repair business at his residence. And the way we left it last time, there were some condition challenges and we asked Justin to come up with some suggestions as to how to mitigate some of those issues. So Justin, do you have any suggestions or thoughts that we should consider? So I'm gonna, hold on, you're on, you're you're on muted. Mute. Let, me, let me give you permission to unmute. There you go. <laughs> All right, um, well, I mean, I guess the, uh, you know, I was pretty stressed out the past month about uh, getting some gates put in um, and, and something I wanna do anyhow. Uh, and I did some pricing on that. We're looking at about, you know, $2,000 in materials to have something, you know, that would swing and, and be durable and look halfway decent. Um, so definitely something I'm doing. Uh, so that's going to be one thing. And that's something that I want anyhow. Um, I did try to get the fire chief up here. Um, I spoke to him on the phone. Uh, we talked for a bit about, you know, chemicals, waste oil, things of that nature. Um, and him and I can't, you know, he get, made some suggestions. He was supposed to come up here and meet with me. He did not end up doing that. Um, and then he was supposed to come again today and did not end up doing that. Um, so, but where it was left with him is that we're going to switch over to some 30 gallon containers and that, that underneath it also has to be sealed, which is something I was kind of aware of anyhow. Um, and, and, and we can certainly do that. And, and honestly, it would be easier for me anyhow that way. So, so uh, let, me, let me just pause you for a moment. I, I'm sort of losing track of what you're talking about. That's 30 gallons for the waste materials? Yeah, for the waste material. And I can put that in a 30 gallon um, container and, it, you know, and outside. Um, and, but just underneath it needs to be sealed in as well. So if that container were to spring a leak and it also needs to be able to hold 30 gallons. Um, you know, these are all things that I was aware of anyway. I, I've dealt with this before in, you know, past job places and whatnot. And that's just kind of the protocol for it. Um, so, so we'll make that happen. Um, you know, beyond that, I, I really haven't heard any other, you know, real complaints that we need to deal with um, other than people turning around in the road. Uh, and, and I do everything in my power to handle that one. Um, you know, and that's phone calls. I tell them it's in an email. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've copy and pasted maps and, you know, with a little doodle on it as to where to turn around. Uh, and they still think it's okay to turn around in the road. So I can change a lot of things or I try to, but I just can't change some things. Um, and, and I, I tell you, I'm, I'm pretty quick to throw somebody out too that, uh, you know, can't follow some of these directions because this kind of means me being able to do what I'm doing. So if they can't follow directions then they don't need to come here. 
is kind of what it boils down to um, as far well, as that goes. One of the things that the fire chief was concerned about was flammable materials, your gasoline. How much gasoline are you storing? I had see, seen in one email it was like 10 gallons. Is that true? Yes. Um, now that's 10 gallons. So that's one five gallon container. And then I have two separate mix containers that I use for different types of mix fuel. Um, you know, so at the very most, we have 10 gallons. But, you know, right now I have less than a gallon here myself. Um, you know, it's time to go refill. Um, that So it goes up to 10 gallons, diminishes off. Um, and then we also talked about chemicals as far as spray paints, carburetor cleaner, brake cleaner, um, things like that. These are all things that I have had here and I would have regardless, um, and, you know, because I take care of my own things, property, house, equipment, whatever. Um, and there's some, you know, chemicals involved in that. Um, so I would have all of these things anyhow. The only difference that has changed about me having, you know, a little repair shop here is the frequency at which I go through them. Uh, space is a big issue for me here anyways. I'm, I'm, it's a problem for me, let alone anybody else. Um, so, you know, I don't stock a lot of this stuff. I, 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 I can't. Um, so it's, you know, it's no different whether I have a shop here or I don't have a shop. It's just the rate at which I go through them. So, you know, if I want to burn through, you know, 10 cans of carb clean, then that's kind of on me. Um, but we don't keep 10 cans of carb clean here. So, uh, Julia, could you put up the, the list of things that we need to consider for a special permit? Sure. Um... So let me go to that section. It's it's in the staff report. It's easy. It's all in the staff report on board docs if it's easier, Julia. Um yeah. you, what's what section is that? It's four point I just have the bylaws up right now. So or ten point four, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. I had it up and then I started looking at other stuff. <laughs> and now, okay, so let me screen share. Okay, so. Here we go, conditions. Oh, no. sorry, this section, criteria. Yeah, and th these are the things that we are to consider when we're putting on a special permit or, or approving a special permit. And traffic flow, including parking and loading to me is an issue. You know, and you made some comments to that, Justin. Yeah. Neighborhood character and social structure and the impact on the natural environment. Those are the three that I, I think as, as we make our findings, we need to be quite clear as to what it is. You know, your fence talks a little bit to the, the neighborhood character. Uh, in, in managing your waste and having the basin underneath your waste can uh, is, is dealing with the impacts on the natural environment and, and your traffic flow. Well, you're on a dead end street, so you got a challenge there. Right. You know, so, and, and I'm just a one person show anyhow, you know, I, I can't handle so many anyhow. So, you know, I, I, I space these people out. I've never once, and it never gets to that amount of volume anyways. I've never told anybody no. Um, you know, so we don't even get to that volume where where I can't even handle it. So when they drop off, you know, it's an extra car that day. Um, every so often, you know, we might get two or three in a day and then I don't see any for, you know, four, five, six days. 
Okay, so on on the, uh, uh, the fire chief's comments, we had asked him, uh, both Bill and I, had, you know, had some emails back and forth trying to understand the rules here, and there might be need for a permit. Did the fire chief talk at all about getting a permit to store the, the hazardous, the flammable material, the gasolines? He he did he did bring up. Uh something about a permit and again i thought he was going to come up here um he was going to come up here uh i don't even know what day it was i don't know he was going to come up here thursday or friday i think and he said he couldn't find my house so <laughs> um i found that kind of amusing i guess um and then he said that you know i spoke to him on the phone and then he was going to come up here this past monday yeah today and, and that never happened either Okay. The, the other thing that, that, that I was concerned about and did a little work on is the amount of hazardous or hazards, the waste material that you have. And I, I don't know, Julia, do you have any further information on that? Because the DEP has some permit requirements too. Yes. So um, I don't have like exactly what permits he would need from DEP. Um, to store that just because I'm not sure if he's hitting that threshold. Um, Paige, you might be able to help me out here since you might have a little bit more information on that with your, your day job. Uh, I wish I could be more helpful. So I'm with the <laughs> Environmental Policy Act office, not, not DEP, but I do know that they're the Office of Toxic or, or there's the OTA office, which regulates this and depending on how much you generate, you need to qualify as like a very small generator. Um, and there's all these yeah. different reporting so, criteria associated with it. Yeah, sure. so I was I was taking a look at 310 CMR 30, um, which this is, that's what's pulled up right now, um, which is a very large document. So we, we won't go through that right now, but um, you know, the, because that's just a state process, you know, it's not something I, I know. So can, can you let me do a, a screen share here, Julia? Of course. Because I think I might have the document you're interested in, but I don't know how to do that. So where do okay. I find screen share? So on the bottom, it says share screen. Oh, yeah. Look at that. And then you just want to choose. It's going to allow you to choose a window. So choose the window that you want to choose that you want to show. I think this is the one I want. And then I say share. And what happened? Did anything happen? Yeah. There you go. There we go. This is this is the uh, very small quantity generator of hazardous waste yep. from from the DEP website. And they talk about cleaning solvents, oils, inks, paints, whatever. And they're ignitable. They can catch fire. They're corrosive, reactive, toxic, and so on. And, and they, they give you all these criteria here. And, and then they say, never accumulate more than 2,200 pounds or 270 gallons. Well, that's you're way below that, Justin. <clears throat> but then they say, as and when you register it, um, thermal treatment such as incineration or vaporization is not allowed. Whoa, well, you said you give this to somebody to burn. So I don't know. I mean, that, this is just what I found on their website. Oh, Justin, so, um, sorry, one one second. You're just muted, so let Paul finish. So this is just something to be aware of. And, and I don't know, I mean, you know, we have other folks here, maybe Julia or Paige could, could help you out more, but that's a lot of waste if you're talking 30 gallons now. Paul, would you like him to be unmuted? You have to let oh, me know. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Okay. Sorry, Justin. You should be sorry. able to unmute now, Justin. Let's, I mean, a small engine holds 20 ounces of oil on average. Um, you know, we're, we're not getting, you know, 30 gallons of waste oil. You know, that, that might happen twice over a course of a year. Um, so, I, I mean, I'm looking at the numbers here, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm not seeing an issue. Well, 
<laughs> yeah, but the point here is uh, just it says here, you know, you may register with DEP as a very small generator and then you can say what you can do. I don't know where their low threshold is, whether you I are or not. All right, well, maybe this, but I will register with whoever I want and get whatever permits that I need to. So whatever it is, I'll do it. So let's just kind of figure out what these things are. Yeah, and, and, and that's, that's my point. And, and these <laughs> two areas, the, you know, the, the fire chief with the flammables and, and then this waste are the things that struck me as, you know, right. so, we gotta worry about. So I spoke with the fire chief. He never showed up here. Everything on paper, I'm under. Um, and the fire chief, you know, he, he didn't seem too, too concerned. He had some questions for me. We gave him some answers and, you know, so where, where's the issue? So just if I can for the board, Mr. Chair, um, the fire chief did not make it this morning. As he, as he said to justice, we did send some remarks that, uh, that the board has been forwarded. Um, Mr. Chair, what, what I, uh, in the case of like something like the DEP, where uh, the applicant is, you know, he's limited to 30, 30 gallon tank in this case. Um, would it uh, suffice if we added a condition that said um, applicant shell uh, is responsible for conforming with DEP statutes with disposal or, or that sort of uh, thing that, that because we don't, as we know, the board has authority to oversee this in general terms, but and in the case of of you know DEP regulation, um, I think that caveat would be the way to uh, deal with um, any hazardous waste or disposal. That, that, that's probably the best way to go. I mean, if you look at our criteria, and and Julia, if you could pop that thing back on the screen, the list of things that we need to consider. Uh, there was and that, right that way the applicant's on notice. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut yeah, you. Yeah. So you would like me to bring it back up? Please. Are we, are you starting I, deliberation? Or are you going to, or keeping the public hearing open? Well, the public hearing is still open, yes. Okay. Just, so it's those, those six items that we are dealing with. And I pointed out that there's three of them there that um, need to be considered. And, and Bill's comment about noting the issues that we're worried about the uh, flammability and the that's the safety issue and <clears throat> the national environment that's the waste collection uh yeah we'll put that on as some of our findings that they need to be complied with through the appropriate agencies and so forth i think i think that's what i'm hearing so justin do you have anything else to add from your thoughts on on how to mitigate any of these issues at this point, I, you know, tell me what to do, and I'll do it. Okay. May I may I jump in, Mr. Chair? Sure, you can jump. You can walk. <laughs> I can do them both. Well, not very well today. Um, Justin, uh, you said that it, for um, in the uh, mix fuel, you had like a maximum of ten gallons and a maximum five gallons of typical gas or fuel on hand. Yeah. Yeah. So would and I'm not I, I can't speak for the board, but I would suggest uh, would that be something if the board was to make that a condition and that the containers and the storage was to be consistent with all town um, uh, fire permitting requirements. And that way it's on again, it's up to you to be consistent with the, the fire chief to get his permit in this case. Yeah. But the board has a security of understanding these are the limitations of the uh, flammable liquids that would be on on site. Is that reasonable? That, that's fine, yeah. Okay. okay, does any board member have questions of Justin? Yeah. Go ahead, I Leslie. Um, I'm always concerned about noise and I know that the town doesn't have uh, regulations about it. Um, beyond the state level, but I'm wondering, um, you said that you run your machines for 15 minutes after you repair them to make sure that they're, that they are actually fully repaired. Do they all have to be run for 15 minutes or 
just some of them? Is there any yes. way to cut down to 10 minutes or? It, it, it's 15 minutes. I, and, and I say 15 minutes. Um, quite often than not, it's it's not 15 minutes because, you know, some machines are newer. We, we know they're going to be okay, but we still test run them. Um, you know, I, I've learned in doing things that, that I say things are bigger and longer. So if I think it's going to take two days, I tell them five days. Um, you know, so these run times generally aren't 15 minutes long. Um, you know, and, and, and nothing for nothing. Nobody had any complaints when I just ran up and down the street with my snowblow for, for an hour. I know. I know. I you know what I mean. Believe me, what you do is a lot less annoying than I have to put up with from my neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, excuse me. How often do you start? Like when we talk about 15 minutes running a motor uh, to test them, how often does it happen a day? Probably average. Well, I mean, if I'm only doing one repair a day, um, which, which, you know, it doesn't really equal out that way. Um, yeah, we're talking one a day. If if we have some sort of a carburetor issue or something, you know, that same machine may get run for five minutes, then we adjust something, then it gets run for another five minutes. And again, you know, I'm not doing this at seven in the morning, eight in the morning, nine in the morning, 10. You know, I, I pick around the afternoon. I pick in the later afternoon. It's winter time. People have got the doors shut, the windows shut. Um, you know, and, 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 and I'm not over here, you know, to be quite honest, I get anxiety starting up things because I know people don't like it. Um, you know, I'm not over here building hot rods and, and, and making a ton of noise for no unreason, you know. Um, and, and, it, and I wish I could show the stress that I have when I do start up something because I know, you know, I know the neighbors are hearing it. Um, so we don't, we, we, we tone this stuff down. Um, it, you know, it's just. So what would it be, it, oh, I'm sorry. So Justin, as, as you worry about starting these things up, would you accept a particular window of time to be, to do that so that you're not gonna surprise a neighbor by, you know, waking him up if he's a late sleeper kind of stuff? Do you that, pick it that's, that's fine. I think as of right now, I have one and it's between 10 and four. Um, in the summertime, that might be a little later, you know, the neighbor's out mowing his lawn at that time, too. Okay. You know, it's just, I kind of think, you know, <laughs> maybe it just comes easy to me. I'm not going to start up something at seven in the morning. I mean, that just kind of seems like a norm. So if it needs to be put on paper or something, if that's what we're getting at, then yes, yeah, so be it. I, whatever they are, I'm sure I'm within them. <laughs> All right. Well, that you, you read my mind because... As we put this special permit together, we will want to have criteria that are documentable. Yes, yeah, and I guess I guess that's the part that I'm missing. Um, that's fine. Yes, but that's you know, let's let's do all that. So let's make that happen. Great. Any any other questions of Justin from board members? Um, I have one question. Sure. Um, just to sort of summarize what you're talking about, um, would there be a time where you might um get to three different machines where you would want to run them for 15 minutes so maybe throughout the day you might have up to three 15 minute blocks or if is that, that is day, that like if, the high end if, if that day happens i made good money that day um right. that doesn't happen very often but um, but it but it does so i guess i want to find out is what's what's the most that you that you would do I would say that maybe happened once this year. <laughs> I wish it happened more, but it doesn't work out that way. Um, yeah, that's part of the, I, that's part of the I, criteria I mean, that we're looking at. We're trying to work with you on that. Right, right. I mean, if we're firing up three different machines in a day, I, I mean, I I can go, I can take all my money and go get a shop downtown somewhere when that starts happening. But that's just not the way it works right now. Um, so we're just, we're not anywhere near that kind of volume that we're running three machines. Has it happened? It probably happened once or twice this past year. Right. Justin, it was probably my fault. I didn't explain what, what the board is doing at this point, and I should have done this before. What they're trying to do is uh, with every permit, with a special permit, they have conditions of approval that establish 
what the board has decided tonight. And, and what we're trying to do is give them a general comfort level. So in Brad's case, like what Brad is saying is, you know, what would be the maximum that, you know, you would be able, that you would feel are, is likely a uh, number of times you're going to start up a motor and then the board would theoretically craft something that says, okay, no more than this and no more than X amount of gallons of waste. See, that's kind of what we're doing. Sure, I should have sure. done a better job with that. I, I apologize. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and yes, now, you know, now that I see all that, yes. So yeah, if, if you want to put a number on it of a maximum three in a day, then I, that's fine with me. And I hope we could do that. <laughs> Okay. Any other questions from board members? Um, I have just one more. Sure, go ahead, Brad. That's okay. Um, it's about the uh, about the traffic. Um, when you put up a fence, are you going to have enough room for someone to pull into your driveway and then and then get out? And especially if they drop something off of the trailer, are they going to be able to back in with the trailer? Because um, I think the neighbors would be very upset to have to use their driveways for your business, for your clients to turn around in? If they use my neighbor's driveway, they're not going to stay here. I've been making that pretty clear with people and, and it's, okay. uh, it's pretty frustrating with me. So that's, that's, that's for one. Um, I, I, I'm pretty much waiting to throw somebody out because of it. Um, so it's just not going to happen. Or, you know, I would like to think it's not going to happen. So, uh, so you'll have yeah, but as far as the fence goes. So now the fence, my, the house is whatever, we'll call it 20 feet off the road. Um, and, you know, and there's a little driveway in front of the house. I would put the gate back 20 feet down the driveway from the house over to the bushes. And that leaves me 20 feet of driveway up front. Plus the gates I put in, I want dual swinging that could swing both ways or at least, you know, inwards, um, you know, so that we, can move things around um and then at you know and end of the day whatever during the day when we don't need to go in and out gates can be shut and you know i i want them to be durable because i will be opening and closing them often um and i want them to look good you know all right thank you so on this uh gate uh thing justin is there going to be a fence along the property line or is it just the gate on the driveway? Paul, if you want to kick in the money, I'll fence it off the whole driveway, eight feet high, and then throw a tarp over the house. Um, no, no, no. no I, 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 <laughs> now, um, I would love to put a nice fence up along the whole driveway. Um, I made $30,000 last year. That's what went into my pocket, and a lot of it's hanging off the wall above me. Um, you know, I'm not making the money to do that. Um, the house blocks off one side, the bushes block off this side, and then the gate would kind of block off the whole front minus the far side of the house. And that's just my backyard. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I was just wondering about the, the vision visibility concept from the street. The gate does not most of that, but yeah. I don't remember what's on the side of the driveway. The, the house, the house and the bushes. Okay. Yeah. So if we put a gate in the driveway, basically you're not going to see, you know, anything as far as any machines go or, you know, anything like that. You're going to see just a, a small portion down the side and down into the backyard. Okay. Yeah. Any any other questions from board members, please? Justin, this is Paige um, from the ZBA. I just had a question. When you're doing that testing, I think one of the comments we heard earlier was uh, there was a comment regarding potential fumes. Uh, does the equipment run testing occur in the driveway or does that occur sort of behind your house? Is there a part of your yard that's farther from other neighbors this is a small engine we're starting up your cars put out quite a bit you know of stuff and fumes um i just i i i don't know what you want me to do on that one. Oh no i'm just i'm just asking like does yeah, it happen i mean it's, 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 it's I, 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 I mow my lawn every week as well sometimes two times a week you know what i mean 
I, I, I think what I think, Justin, would you think that the, I mean, when you do it, it when you start the engine, where do you typically start it though? It's, in, in, in the driveway. I, I, okay. I guess what, yeah. I'm, what I'm getting at is what's, I don't know, in the driveway. Okay. All right. I've been asking a lot of questions. Do we have anything else from the board members before we begin our deliberation? I see we have another person online here. Donna, do you have any questions, comments? You got to unmute her to do that. There oh, we go. Hi. Yeah. Thanks for acknowledging me. No, thank you. I'm I'm just listening. I'm I'm uh, in support of of other you know home occupations in the community. Um, I'm just listening. Thank you for um, recognizing me. All right. So. Um, are we going to go into deliberation now? Is that agreeable, do you think, everybody? I hear, I see a bunch of nods. I can't hear the nods. Everybody's on mute. So um, we should uh, close a public hearing then, Mr. Chair. It's good. So he <laughs> says we need to have a, a, a motion. Do we have said motion? Make them. Yeah, I'll Leslie does the motion. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Okay. One of you guys seconded. So all in favor? All right, so now, now we're going to deliberate. The, the challenge that, that I see in this one is the definition of a trade shop. And our permit issue for a trade shop is a building. And that, that's what I'm struggling with is how do we rationalize where he actually you know, does the repair versus his assembly area out in the driveway. And the, the, the fence might mitigate that, but the trade shop permit is for use in a building. So if you guys wanted to comment on that, I'd appreciate it. Would you like me to pull up that definition, Paul? Yes, please. Well, I've got, a, I've got something I'd ask while we're waiting to pull up about the definition. Um, and and I, I know the definition you're talking about, Paul. Um, I think in that same in that same vein, though, when we look at it, uh, one of the examples, for example, is a plumber. Now, it, it, it you know, and it calls out, I think, a plumber. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Um, typically, like in that case, a plumber and probably a mason um you know it may be leaving the premises to conduct the trade they're storing everything at their right it, it, and, and basically the trade shop in that those cases and you pick some good ones to talk about uh, are where he stores his materials inside that building and you know he's a building in connection with his trade well with it with you know with the work would I would think where the, the, the trade would take place typically. Not necessarily. Now, well, some of it in the case of like a tinsmith, right. <laughs> vector, the upholster probably, but I, I'll let others talk. I was just curious. Thank I you. was just thinking about that. Okay. Hmm. I don't see anything in there that says specifically it's a building only. It, the, it talks about the premises and it talks about in, uh, in connection use, with its trade. Yeah. So if you can consider the driveway part of the premises, I think. Yeah, but it doesn't say that. It says use the home or building thereon. And that, that that's where I'm struggling with it. And that's that's one reason why we're trying to rewrite the rules, right? Right, right. Yeah. To, to, to clean this up a little bit. But what we're dealing with right now is this is the definition. This is what he's applying for as a special permit. Yeah. It, it, it's in connection still with the trade, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that that would be. I, I I see what you're saying, but that would be my comfort level on that. Right, but, but we we need you know. With all respect, Bill. I, I'd like to get the feedback from the the board members here because they're the ones that are going to be committing their signature to this. Of of course, I apologize. Of Jerry, you need to deal that mute button. 
Thank yeah, I, so I, I guess one of the things that I'm thinking, looking at the definition of trade shop, one thing passes my mind is, does he even need a special permit? I mean, he's got the shop, but he does all the, does the work outside, the testing outside. To your point, Paul, um, he, he's not working in the shop per se. So I'm not sure what restrictions we can really put. We've already put them for uh, amount of uh, you know waste oil and things of that nature, gasoline, flammables. That's all dealing with the shop, but the work predominantly appears to be done outdoors. He said, he said he's doing some work in his basement. That's where he does the actual uh, uh, cleaning up and repairing and whatever needs to be done, reassembling. Okay. All right. I wouldn't think that he would be. Uh, tinkering around with removable, you know, parts that he can take inside and work on in the warmth of his basement. And I certainly consider my driveway part of my home. So you want to include uh, the property? Uh, I, I believe that a, that a home is not just the, the building, but, but your property as well. Okay. I have a question or a comment, if I could. Sure. Um, so a, a carpenter, a mason, a painter, all these people uh, um, presumably have a vehicle and they probably park their vehicle in the driveway. So from their building that they're using, they're using, uh, they're loading it into their, you know, probably into their truck and then they're driving their truck. So they're not using, they're using more than just the building. They're also using their driveway and their premises part of their part of their business or as part of their trade job. Well, you had to load up their vehicle and go somewhere. Right. Yeah. But that's that's not actually working on the driveway. And this fellow here would be working on the driveway, taking the, the fuels out of his machine and then re, reassembling the fuels, testing it, he tests it in the driveway and so on. The driveway is part of his activity. Mm hmm which is different than somebody loading up some pipe on his truck to, to go fix somebody's plumbing problem. So that, that's where I'm struggling with it. And, and I don't know, John Page, do you have any further thoughts on this? I, oh, sorry, John. No, no go ahead, Page. Because I may have misunderstood, um, but it sounds like the, the actual repair work or the majority of it does occur in the repair shop in his basement. And it's the draining of the fuels and the test running components that are occurring outside. Correct. So I, I would think I am pretty comfortable with how the trade shop definition is and that this would meet it because I feel like the primary work, like the actual repair components, most of that is occurring in the repair shop in his basement. It's really just the, this, minor, I shouldn't say minor, but this other incidental um, activity that's occurring outside. All right, John? No, uh, Paige, that's good. The, the pieces I was thinking about was is a home on the premises may use the building of the home or, or other building, but obviously that's all on the premises. So I'm just saying, thinking what um, Wesley said, the premises are your home. So it looks like it might be covered. Okay. So I, I think we have a, a, I don't know if an agreement, but we tend to concur on that. And then we have uh, following the, the those, uh, if you, if we, excuse me, I'm, I'm muttering here. Julia, if you could put that other thing up again, the listing of the, the uh, criteria. I forgot I was on mute. <laughs> I just find it again. Okay. Yeah, those those six items. So you heard me talking a bit earlier. I'd like to have your feedback board members about those six items. Was I reasonable? Was, did I miss something? Can you guys still see that? Mm -hmm. 
No. So do we want to just go through those six items or how, do, how would you like to do this and, and how you're answering each of them? Yeah, I think we need to have findings and on each one. And yeah. then after the finding, we would want to include um, uh, limiting criteria if there are any. Yeah, okay, so. The social economic community needs, which are served by the proposal on that one. Uh, yeah, he's he's got a, he's he he's got a trade job and folks are coming to him so it must be a community need right we tend to agree with that one traffic flow and safety including parking and loading we heard some discussion about the driveway so do we want to put uh criteria on that one i would prefer to I, I think this is something that's occurring already but i think it'd be helpful to include it as a condition is that the pickups and the drop-offs are by appointment only um, and a reservation only and that um if there is a trailer that there it needs to be directed to park or back up into the driveway and remain really on the uh, applicant's property and not really extending into the road so that it's blocking traffic flow. That's that's a good catch. I like that. Adequacy of utilities and other public services. I I don't see an issue here. I think they're adequate because it's a it's a S one property and they're doing whatever they're doing in an S one, right? And so the next one, neighborhood character and social structures. I don't know what a social structure is. But the, the neighborhood character is where I believe the fence comes in. Any other comments? We put the criteria that the fence or the gate, the, the camouflage gate or whatever you want to call it works. Uh, you're, you guys are on mute, so speak up, <laughs> demute first. Yeah, the gate, the gate should be sufficient in, in my view. And as the petitioner stated that the volume of money he generates on an annual basis um, isn't that high. So if we were to request him putting a fence around his property, that would be exorbitant, I believe. So I think putting the gate in uh, yeah, basically shields the most part what we want to shield it. I think putting the gate in is the best thing he can do right now. Okay. And uh, he's, he's not going to be putting up a sign, so that's not going to change the character of the neighborhood either. Right, so we that's a good catch to say no sign. Okay. Uh, impacts on the natural environment. Well, th this is getting to the, the hazardous waste management, and he, he commented he's going to be putting a basin underneath it. Um, for the basin to work, it probably should be protected from um, the weather so it doesn't get buried in snow and negate the impact of the collection if he has a, a, a leak. So I think here uh, the impact would be he needs to follow the, the DEP rules or the fire code rules, whichever one is the right one, to protect his hazardous waste from being a problem. And I, I don't know the technical way to phrase that, but that's that's what that I'm sounds, thinking. Go ahead, um, yeah, I think exactly what you're saying. I was just going to add, uh, I think by saying, you know, following the, the local state and um, local and state guidelines around hazardous waste uh, storage and disposal. Yes, that's okay. good. I like your phraseology. Um, and then the last one here, fiscal impact, town services, tax base, employment. 
Well, the tax base, I, I don't know if, if he's reporting this as a business or if he's just doing it on the slide for, you know, town issues. <laughs> he's shaking his head, no. <laughs> <laughs> so any comments from the board members on uh, impact on town services, tax base, employment, whatever that is? Do you have to worry about that? Think so it's almost a factor. So. Yeah, I don't think that's a factor that needs mm -hmm. much discussion at all. Good. All right. So we've gone through the the issues and we considered all six of these items. Paul, can I just add one thing before we move on? Um, with that with that last one, usually what what you guys have done in the past with special permits is just um requiring that the business be um, uh, registered with the town. Thank you. That's um, what I was looking for. So yeah, he, he may have already done that, but we we put that in the in the special permit just um, as a at this point it seems like it every everyone, everyone that has to do with the business. Thank you. I, I, was, I was struggling with how to phrase that because it doesn't happen to me that often. Me too, right. as you can see. <laughs> Do we want so, to put um, a criteria that he um, come back for review in a year or? The, you're right, Leslie. This is, this is an annual renewal. And so for him to continue operating nonstop, he would need to be back here before a year so that it can be approved at the one year before the one year event is up. Okay. So I, you, you can see Justin, how many months this has taken to get you this far. Give us a few more weeks to get the document out, assuming we, we vote for you here. And then to get the next year, you need to budget however many months that is ahead of time. So I think we have covered it. I think the tone here is to grant the permit, but we need somebody to make that motion. And the easiest way to do that, since Julie has taken perfect notes, is to simply say, so moved. So who's going to be that volunteer? I'd be happy to say, so moved. But don't Good. ask me to go through all the details. <laughs> that, 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 Please. That's exactly why I said Julie has taken all these notes. Perfect. I will unfortunately uh I will have to just have you make a motion to to uh, grant the permit with conditions as discussed. You could you there could you go. That. She's so good. So moved. <laughs> I can't do it. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Any further discussion? <laughs> hearing hearing none. Um, all those in favor, raise hand or whatever. If I'm voting tonight, I vote. So we see a, a whole bunch of hands up. So I think it was unanimous. I didn't hear Sorry, any. Who seconded defense. that one? That was me, John. Thank you. So, Justin, I apologize this took long, but frankly, this was one of the hardest uh, special permits I had to go through because of all the different caveats we had to worry about. So I appreciate your patience on this. And, Does he uh, still need to hear from the fire chief? He, Is this that, like all pending on the fire chief? The, the way um, the fire chief did issue his comments, Leslie, yes. um, which are, but um, what in the conditions it will say, you know, it's, it's the applicant's responsibility to make sure he's consistent with the fire chief's local requirements local and state requirements okay um and also justin i've got to jump off of here everybody i'm sorry i have to go to the fincom meeting um but uh julia maybe you could just explain to justin real quick that we're redoing yes. this bylaw right now so hopefully and and then he can kind of add his you know he'd be uh it'd do good for to have his input and here um and have him provide some additional input for the um the, process as Bill heads to the sunset, the other thing I like to ask is you know, either Bill or, or Julia to uh, I can explain it. describe yeah. 
the timeline of when what happens now for Justin. Yeah. So Justin, basically, um, you'll probably will write your permit um, most likely this week. Uh, we usually when when it happens on a on a Monday, it's nice because we have uh, the rest of the week to work on this. Um, I will make the caveat that, um, as you may have seen, Bill is Bill is technically out right now. Um, he's having to work from home, um, and I am at a conference this week. So, goal is to get it by Friday, but I'll, I'll let you know when that goes through. Um, and then there's a 20 day appeal period. So during that time, no work can be done. Like right now, you shouldn't be doing any work um, until you get that permit. Once that 20 days comes up, um, you will we'll send you an email, you'll come in um, to the clerk's office and they'll hand you your, your physical permit. And then that needs to get registered um, at the registry of deeds. Um, so. So I'll give you all those directions um, when we get to that point. But once your 20 days is up and you have that permit in hand um, and it's it's registered, you are you are good to go. Is that good enough, Paul? Did I miss anything? No, no, that that's fine. Just to give them the uh, I I click something here. I'm losing you. But anyway, yes, that's fine. So we have another motion that we need i think we're all done with our agenda is that right that is correct and was so something there was something on there about the planning uh update on the agenda does anybody know anything about that yeah it's item four hmm. hold on i i didn't build <clears throat> the the agenda so um, it's just Bill's usual news at the end. I think, yeah, yeah you, he just keeps those on there um, as uh, okay. a placeholder, basically, for, for any new updates. I mean, the biggest thing right now is obviously we encourage all of you to come to the planning board meeting February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day, where we will continue to talk about um, the zoning amendments um, for uh, home-based businesses. So um, that will be, it's, we have a meeting tomorrow, but the, um, the discussion was continued to February 14th. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, let me know if you, if you have any other questions uh, or concerns and- um, So I got will... a question, I got a question for you, Julia. Yes. On this planning board discussion that you mentioned on the 14th, I assume that's in getting ready to put the home-based business in front of town meeting. Correct, yeah. So they need to vote um, to uh, su support the amendment going to town meeting. Okay, and if that happens, and, it, and if it goes to town meeting, and town meeting approves it, yep. when does it become effective? July 1st. That, that's when the new bylaws would be out and this would be in there. Correct. And yeah, so, so it gets approved in May um, and then, but it's not effective until the fiscal year starts, the next fiscal year post so the meeting. So the reason I'm asking this, Justin, is that this would, if, if all gets approved the way it's described, your next special permit renewal thing, which would be next spring, the end of the year, first part of the next of 24, yes. would be by the new rules, right? right yeah. Julia? Um, yeah, so we'll send, um, we have, you know, uh, not many, a few uh, special permit holders right now. Um, so we will definitely get in contact with them as soon as town meeting, um, you know, if those, if everything goes through um, and kind of start working with with them, but also, you know, kind of talk with you guys on how we want to start approaching, you know, the ones that are coming up for annual renewal and how we get them their new permits. Um, that's going to be, I think, the hardest ones is these ones in transition uh, where they have a permit and now they're trying to get. Okay. So we'll, we'll continue to work on that. Great. So with that being said, I think we're done with all the, the listed items. So I need another motion. Motion to adjourn. Great. Do I get a second? Second. Great. All in favor. Yay. Aye. Aye. So thank you very much, everybody.
Okay. Thank you. Good luck, Justin. Yes. Good luck, Justin. Thank you all. Yep. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.